Hello everybody, this is Kim, and today I'm going to switch things up a little bit, and I'm going to talk to you about the New York Renaissance, which was also known as the Harlem Rens. They were the first all-black, black-owned professional basketball team. They were owned by a man named Bob Douglas, who was the owner of, it was actually originally they were the Spartan Braves. They were a top contender in basketball, they had won a ton of games, and they were actually poised to win the next colored basketball championship. But the challenge that he had was he did not have a home court. Now there was a location right in downtown Harlem which was called the New York Renaissance Ballroom and Casino. And it had a ton of space inside. It was right in the heart again of Harlem and it had overhead balconies so people could sit up there and you know and look down at the games. So what he did was negotiate with the owner of the team and said, "Hey, if you allow us to use this as our home court, then as we travel around, we will promote the venue and send business your way. So that's how the Wrens went from being the Spartan Braves to the Harlem Renaissance and, you know, continued on their way. Now, they were such a good team, they would attract a lot of top black talent. In fact, four of the original players were, before this, professional Negro League baseball players. So it just shows you how athletics could transcend from sport to sport, because even like Goose Tatum, who some of you may have heard of, he played for the Harlem Globetrotters. He got his start with the Indianapolis Clowns, just like Hank Aaron did. That's another story. Anyway, um, in 1924, 25 season, they won a number of uh, colored basketball championships. And ultimately they dominated basketball for 25 years, black, white, or otherwise. A lot of times they would routinely beat the white national championship teams which had a certain irony since the teams that they were beating were part of leagues that would not allow black teams or players to be a part of them. One of the best games or I guess barnstorming series that they did was with a team called the Original Celtics and they would travel around with them a lot. They would go to the South, they would go to the Midwest and the Original Celtics recognized the level of racism that the Renaissance players had to deal with be it from housing, be it just how they were treated on the court. So what they decided to do is instead of during tip-off or you know right at the beginning where they would go and everybody shake hands, the Celtics would embrace the Harlem Renaissance players as a, a sign of solidarity and unity and hoping that maybe they would be able to start a trend and show that you know color was not an issue, that that didn't need to be a factor. Um, so in 1939, they actually won the World Professional Basketball Tournament. But then in 1940, they lost to the Globetrotters, which, I mean, it's the Globetrotters. So ultimately, Bob Douglas was the first black man to own a basketball team. And not only was he the first one to own it, but it was the greatest team of its time. And he was way ahead of his time just because of the fact that as a black man, he wasn't even supposed to be allowed to own a team. So that is today's little known black history fact. If you like this content, show you our sign. You can see us on all social media at Black B4U, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. If you like, I decided this Negro League, this is obviously a Negro League baseball jersey. I'll turn around so you can see the back. It's NLBM stands for Negro League Baseball Museum, but I think today we'll say it's Negro League and basketball museum we'll mix it up a little bit um, but you can also see this jersey on our website at black empowering our future by honoring and preserving our past this is kim have a great day